middle age, hurt by life, Margaret retreated into camp, becoming a nightclub burlesque of her sister. But she was never camp in the same way that the Queen Mother was camp. Her camp was not arch or sentimental. It did not strive to be inclusive or merry or to render the world as a romp. She didn't twinkle or sparkle. She would never say such fun as though she meant it. She would take pains to inject the phrase with a dash of generalised irony. Nor was she camp in the service of something beyond herself. She had no wish to draw others in and refused to offer them the illusion, however fleeting, of parity. Being thought real or down to earth is not what she wanted. She was of royalty yet divorced from it. Royalty set in a, at an oblique angle, royalty through the looking glass, royalty as pastiche. At a fancy dress party on Moustique, she wore a Valkyrie outfit, hired for her by Colin Tennant from a Los Angeles costumier, and in it she mimed an aria from The Ring. For her 50th birthday, the Tennants gave her a gold embroidered dress from India. I've always longed to have a dress like that, she said. It's what a real princess would wear. She was royalty as hokey-cokey, one foot out, one foot in. Royalty as real yet unreal. Royalty as real as you want it to be, as the mood takes you. She was cabaret camp, ma'am camp. She was Noel Coward, cigarette holders, blusher, Jean Cocteau, winking, sighing, dark glasses, Bette Lynch, charades, Watteau, colourful cocktails at midday, ballet, silk, hoity-toity, dismissive overstatement, arriving late, entering with a flourish, exiting with a flounce, pausing for effect, making a scene. Mam Camp is having a drink in a cut glass tumbler delivered to you in the swimming pool and then ordering your hostess to bring the tumbler into the pool even though she is fully clothed. Mam Camp is her host's compliance in these antics. Mam Camp enjoys inverting expectations. To those expecting grace, it presents hauteur. To those wanting empathy, it delivers distance. To those in need of tradition, it offers modernity. To those in need of modernity, it offers tradition. It is languid, bored, world-weary, detached, bored, fidgety, demanding, entitled, disgruntled, bored. It carries the seeds of its own sadness and scatters them around like confetti. It looks in the mirror for protracted periods of time but avoids exchanging glances with itself. It is disappointment hiding behind the shield of hauteur, keeping pity at bay. I've never known an unhappier woman, says John Julius Norwich after her death. It is pantomime as tragedy, and tragedy as pantomime. It is Cinderella in reverse. It is hope dashed, happiness mislaid, life mishandled. Nothing is as thrilling as they said it would be, no one is as amusing, as clever, as attractive or as interesting. The sun never shines as bright as it used to, and even the fiercest thunderstorm lacks any real sense of drama or pizzazz. As the curtain falls, Group Captain Charming has left her for someone more suitable and has gone to live in France, and Buttons, in his zip-up jumpsuit, has taken up with a wearying succession of younger lovers. When Cinderella dies, her little glass slipper is put up for auction, a memento of days of hope and innocence. The catalogue entry reads, only worn once.